we think we could go to the magistrate to, to get justice. Well, no, you're getting a service. You could liken it to uh, your neighbours having a fight. So the husband's fighting with his wife and you turn up at the door and you knock and you say, look, I've come in here to, to help you with your, your argument. I heard you screaming and uh, I can adjudicate for you. And the guy turns around and looks at you and says, nah, piss off. I'll settle this in my house. I mean, he doesn't need your service, right? The Catholic Church controls everything that happens in, in, in your uh, court, courtrooms, okay? Everything, the whole lot. Unum Sanctum tells you that everything on this planet belongs to the Catholic Church, okay? You too. Hand up if you've got a papal bull where you've cursed the whole world and, and claimed to possess the... Does anyone do that sort of shit? No. They do. That's the presumption. Because that's their claim of right. system of trusts. These are the trusts, okay? This takes away your um, real property. This takes away your personal property. This takes away your soul. Consequently, when you are born, you come out of your mother's water. Therefore, you must have a birth certificate, a certificate of manifest, because you are a corporation-owned item. You are a human resource. You've all been baptized into the Catholic Church. You got a birth certificate? That's your baptism. See, it's a ritual. They perform this ritual in our hospitals, but we are born in wards. You are wards of the state. When you notify on your baby by signing the birth certificate, your child becomes a ward of state. From every birth certificate, a legal personality or legal fiction is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it, all spun from Black's Law Dictionary. For example, when the police say, do you understand, you'll say, yes. What they are really saying is, do you stand under our authority? Oops-a-daisy, you've just created a verbal contract with them. Oh, you clever government. This can help us to reclaim dominion once we know who we are. We got to start treating the legal person like a corporation. And we started to break down the corporate structure and trust law and we started to realize that once we become the sole shareholder, which we are, once we realize who we are. Every corporation has shareholders. You're the single sole shareholder of your corporation, your, your registered birth name, reclaim that position. So when you go into court, you just rock up and you say, hey, Mr. Judge Boy, I happen to be the general executor of this account. And uh, by whose authority do you use that name as personal identification? So uh, I'm going to appoint you trustee and you just dissolve this case. Bye-bye. Business is done and get out there, get out of there. Your name is irrelevant, it's your title, what role are you playing? Well today I went to court as President, Chief and Executive Officer of that corporation and I'll be damned if his attitude didn't change about 180 degrees. And he turns around and he's like, uh, and he goes, uh, who are you? I said, well, I'm here regarding the matter for, you know, blah, 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 Manitoba Limited. He's like, all right. He goes, name? I said, my name is President and Chief Executive Officer of that corporation. He goes, oh, um, okay. Um, uh, uh, how did you want to proceed today? I said, well, there's not going to be a hearing. There's no need. No one cares about Bob playing hockey. They want to know what position he plays. Right? When they went to the, the chess pieces, I don't care what you name them, you want to know what their responsibilities on the board are. This is their presumptions, and unless you rebut those presumptions, they stand.
That's why they can get little young 18-year-old boys that come to court and they're trembling and nervous because they, they, they didn't have a license or they, they s were speeding or something like that. And they get taken into court and people are being jailed for not paying Citilink. This is how they can do this. They can get away with it. Because people aren't saying, hey, hang on a minute here now. Hang on a minute. I am the sole beneficiary and shareholder of my corporation. And I'm going to tell you, Mr. Public Servant, what's for. You're not going to tell me. And I do not consent to your jurisdiction. They can do that if you don't know who you are. When you get a bill, it's sent to you but belongs to your straw man. When you go to court, you represent your straw man. So you, the human, take on any costs, fees, taxes and fines involved for the straw man. The human you doesn't even need to pay them. If you knew, you'd stop paying things like council tax and parking tickets. Because when you go to court, you are representing your straw man. You are you. Alive and made of flesh and blood. Your straw man or legal personality is a piece of paper created from your birth certificate. And you think it's you. What a silly Billy. Are you well for keep talks? driving a vehicle, they refused to provide certain information required by law. So, pleading not guilty to that today? I'm not pleading anything. I don't understand any of it. Okay. We'll set a trial date for you. I don't Can't understand any of it. Okay. Well, do you have any specific questions about the specific charges? I don't understand any of it. All right. 17. Your address? That's the address the federal government labels on that property. Is that, is that where you live? I have hung my head there. Answer your address, and then we'll set a date for your trials here. All this for going to church, huh? You know, you can turn this into something more than it has to be if you want to. Oh, I think you guys did that. I didn't do that. I don't want another word from you. You got it. Absolutely. I'll be very quiet. What do you want? I'm the director. I'm the, I'm the president and CEO of that legal person. I don't care what you say. You're establishing your status, your, your, your authority with that court, that the courtrooms are not for any of us. Courtrooms are platforms for public trustees. We're not meant to go down there. You set policy. But if you walk into a courtroom and you just become another pu public trustee, there's no officer of your corporation there from, from up top. They're, they're going to enforce statutes. We need to stand up in Dominion and uh, tell them that we don't need those services. He knew damn well who I was. If I said Dean, well, well, Dean, <laughs> what do I care what your name is? We're enforcing city Winnipeg statutes against your corporation, right? Because they're going to operate on the presumption that I'm not the director or anybody else because that's how they operate. The presumption. All of this system is run on the, uh, on the presumption of your being uh, lost at sea. Uniform Commercial Code is based directly on Vatican Canon Law, on the Roman Canon Law. Consequently, when a ship pulls into port, it pulls in and stops in its call in its berth. The ship is now in its berth. 
because it is on the law of the high seas or commercial maritime UCC commercial law rules the seas. So when the ship pulls into its berth, the first thing that the captain must do is to present a certificate of manifest to the port authorities, which means that the port authorities need to know how much is on this ship that you're bringing into our country and our economy. How many TVs, how many cars, uh, whatever you're bringing, how much are you bringing into our economy. So you have to have a certificate of manifest of what is the value of your ship here. What are you doing? What is citizenship? It's the citizen ship. It's the citizen ship. You're on the citizen ship. You're on Canada. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, enjoy all that comes with that. See, this is the law of the high seas, the holy sea, because you're lost out at sea. You're incompetent. That's the presumption they make. Unless you write to the Attorney General and tell him, ah, excuse me, uh, I've come of age and I'm going to uh, be the general executor from now on. You just step aside, buddy. You want to dishonor a court official? Well, that is on LaBelle's desk. Sir, are you here on behalf of Mr. Thompson? I said I was the administrator for that account. Are you here as agent for him? Could you guys please back up? Thanks. Are you here as agent for him? Not as agent, as administrator, much like you are administrator of this uh, this court. Sir, you're either him or you're here as his agent. I'm just keep on his behalf. Are you either of those? Yes, it's all. Pardon? It's in, it's in common law jurisdiction, which I established as soon as I came in here this morning and reestablished again. The bailiff understood me. This other bailiff, wherever she went, she understood me as well. And this gentleman doesn't like talking. We're going to take a recess. Thank you. Thank you. All right. How long? How long, sir? I don't, I don't have all day. Thank you. I have things to do. <coughs> we'll take the court. Yeah, actually, uh, please note that the judge has abandoned the court. It's abandoned <coughs> ship. And I, as the sovereign in this room, clear, claim authority, case dismissed, with cause and prejudice. Have a nice day. See you later. See you later.